Foot Clan, the time is now. You need to win a title or else. We've got waiver wire tips on today's show, streaming defenses, all the latest news. It's time to tune in and win that championship. Hey, Foot Clan, before we start today's show, I want to let you know the 2019 Foot Clan title gear is out. You can go to shopballers.com and grab yourself a little, little piece of swag, Ooh, Jason, uh, a little I, piece of swag. I hope I will be next week. We'll see. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Excited to be with you again. It's me, Jason, and a bear. Roar. No, you you just say hey. Oh. You don't have to. Because uh, I can speak. You don't have to. I know you feel inferior to the cardboard bear that He's sits like in se- Mike's stead. He's seven feet tall. Yeah, but not sitting. Every time that we meet I people. I told him to sit because of how intimidated you are. Well, also, the camera would not be focused on a good spot if he was standing. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. We wouldn't go to the Jay Grizz cam very often if he was Roar. standing. Uh, the microphone would be poorly positioned. Yeah. Uh, moving on. Welcome into the show, Tuesday, December 17th. Uh, it is Jason and myself today. Mike is is fine. Mike is, is, is well, and he is fine, and he's got some family stuff going on. Some people asking if he was okay yesterday because he, he didn't do Sunday Live. Right. I can promise you Mike is uh, – he regrets he's, not being able to be with you this week. Yes. He very much wants to be here. But yeah. He's got family stuff going on. Yeah. So uh, we're here with you, uh, and we've – look, we, we put in a cardboard bear in his place. What more do you want? I feel like – That should I, be – people should be more thankful. I don't want – to disparage Mike, but I feel like it's an upgrade. Like not not in I, the show entertainment because he doesn't say much. No, but just in like you know our job aesthetically. This week, it, aesthetically, <laughs> the cardboard bear looks like he has a home. And ever since Mike shaved the beard down, need I more, mean, need more fur. Need here. more fur. Yeah. All right, we have a a pretty important show today. We're going into Championship Weekend. We're talking waivers. We've got news to talk about. We have uh, discussions on quarterback streaming option, non yeah. non plural non pluralized, and then uh, some defensive streamers, which really is a humongous part of this week. And a lot of your decision making is not the same this week as it would be the regular season. I mean, you're no longer making decisions on the long term. You're probably free to cut like 90% of any handcuff type of options this week oh, all, to go play defense against your opponent. You are free to cut all handcuffs unless the current starter is somewhat injured. You know, Perfectly that, set. That's it. Otherwise, you don't need to hold them. You're not rostering them for the future. You are playing for this week. You don't need to hold a tight end that you're not going to play this week unless you are keeping them away from your opponent in the championship matchup. And there are nuances this week, nuances with certain teams. And so we'll get into all that. But, I mean, waivers win championships. They do through the year, and they do this week. Like every single championship year, there are waiver wires that make a difference, and we going to get into it today. Yeah, and, and to – Echo that point. You also well, like Dion Lewis would be an example. You don't cut Dion Lewis because you don't. You know, Derrick Henry's missed some time. This is on the handcuff discussion. The other part is, you don't do yourself any favors if you end up like being loyal to a player that that helped you in Week Six. That's on your roster, and you're like, man, I got to the title game because of this player, and then I'm going to play him out of loyalty now. That's not how you win a title. You just got to do what you've been doing, which is making smart decisions based on the information you have. Which right now means you're you're not loyal to guys that, you know, stink now. Like right. Te- Tevin Coleman, per- perfect example. Tevin Coleman, a guy that is the you know uh, honorary starter. He still got the first snaps, I believe, this last week. He is an honorary starter for a good r- running team. You're not going to play him, so cut him. I mean, that, that, it's that simple. If now, if you're in a week 17 championship, these things change a little bit. But not by much. Like even with Tevin Coleman, I don't. You know, I'm not worried about my opponent playing him. I there are certain guys like that where I'd be like, sure, 
please scoop them up and play them against me. All right, before we kick things off, I do want to let people know, if, if you want to understand what we do, we're a year-round fantasy football show, which means our content, it keeps coming on into January, past the championship season. We've got truth episodes. Mm, That's kind of the them. first uh, a piece of the off-season, right? And, and explain that for yeah, me. Yeah, so people love these episodes. It's really helpful to exit the season and take a look at what the truth is of these players are as far as how they helped or did not help you win games in fantasy. Because you look at the end of the season, you say, oh, this guy was the wide receiver 12. He was a good pick. That's not always the case. That's very much not true. And we take a look at which guys were actually consistent, which guys exploded for three monster games but sucked the rest of the year, and which and, and the reasons why. You know, it's like, okay – did this person really come on strong? Anthony Miller has been yeah. a beast over the last month. Now, we have to have context to that. Is that because Taylor Gabriel's been out and that's it? Or is it because he leveled up? So we we really take a look at all the players. So that's a great series. That'll be coming a couple weeks after the season is over. I'm working on that data right now. And we also have the Footy Awards. Hoo, hoo. The Footy Awards are coming. The footies! And you guys vote for those uh, tons of different categories? So not only will you vote, but we are... So, Fooklin, we need your help right now. We're going to post Brooks' post on social media thread uh, for the uh, best nicknames of the year and best show moments of the year and anything else that we've got for uh, our footy awards because we don't remember anything. No, no, Literally no. nothing. My favorite nickname this year? I have no idea. <laughs> I don't remember. Well, one. we've done a few shows. That's why. We're kind of running to the end of the year here. We've done a few hundred thousand shows by my recollection. That is factually <laughs> accurate. The math check checks out. Checks out. Yeah. And so those are coming up as well. Be sure to check the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. we got the rankings, the start, sit tool up there. And uh, you can find us on Twitter at the FF Ballers if you want to interact with those uh, those threads that Brooks is going to put up there. Suggest your favorite nicknames of the year, that type of stuff. We had a Monday night football game of sorts. It was really more of an exhibition yeah. of Drew Brees. Well, it was one all-time great quarterback against one of the worst quarterbacking performances I can remember. That's the way I looked at that game. Because Brissett, who has been okay, and what, I don't know what's Bre going on with your face. What's going on with my face? Is, is how good Breeze was? 29 for 30? You didn't realize that? They talked about it the whole Do game. Do you think I listened to Booger? No, I had that thing true. on, that, yes, on, on mute. On mute. No, he was unbelievable. He actually set the NFL record in the game <laughs> where he set the record for the most all-time passing touchdowns. He also set the record for the highest completion percentage in a game. Took it over from Phillip Rivers, which I was ecstatic about. Because he deserves <laughs> nothing. No uh, records. Oh, no. 29 for 30, 307 and 4. I think this was an absorption situation where Breeze took whatever Brissett had. Oh, took some powers. And he just said, those are mine and you're left with nothing. Because Brissett was, I think Brissett's an okay quarterback. I don't think he's a bad quarterback. But he was straight up hot garbage. He was overthrowing Every, I mean, wide, wide. You know, open Andrew Luck players. was trending on on Twitter. Oh, I don't doubt it. Yeah, there were there were beckonings from the Colts fans for a return next season. You, you saw Frank Reich also is writing him a letter today. You saw wide receivers bowing their heads, rolling their eyes, dropping their hands in like, what am I? Sub I'm out here running a route. What am I supposed? I'm doing to do? my job. Yeah. Uh, Alvin Kamara, overall, another disappointing performance um, on the ground. 14 for 66, didn't get into the end zone. And Latavius Murray was involved early and often. Uh, Alvin Kamara still still outsnapped him, 14 to 9, as, as far as carries. But early on in the game, I mean, it was like, oh, Latavius Murray's in, and he's looking just as good, if not better than Kamara on some of those runs. I think the, the negative story of the night, outside of Brissett, which nobody was really starting, is Marlon Mack. I mean, Marlon Mack, I mean, 11 for 19. It was it was end awful. Of, end of story. I mean, I, I had a person send me a note yesterday. They were going into the night. They needed two points for Marlon Mack. Their buddy, who was trolling them, as is the way yeah. in fantasy football, made the joke to him before the game began, I bet he gets 19 yards. 
He got 19 yards and he lost. A soothsayer. So yeah, Marlon Mack. I mean, I'll bet he. I'll bet that buddy was sweating when the last second garbage time, really unnecessary and stupid pass interference call on Jack Doyle put them at the goal line, and you're yeah. like, oh, maybe Marlon Mack is going to get his fantasy game saved, and Jordan Wilkins runs right in for a one yard touchdown. Yeah, and then really, really was proud of it. No, he, he, he was I, he was real proud of I that. I don't feel like he celebrated that nope. much. No, he mm. just. He, I thought he gave the Garnett, the Kevin Garnett, kind of the look. The once I, he once I he got into the end zone, I couldn't see his jaw to see if because Garnett <laughs> does the light, yeah, the he puts underbite, the, jaw out there. the mean underbite. You see, he's in a movie, Garnett. Yeah. Well, that's a bad movie <laughs> with Adam Sandler, and it's not a comedy. It's like a real. It's like a serious drama. Count me out. <laughs> Moving on. News and notes from around the league presented by Sleeper. All right, so catch us up, Jason. What's going on with Dalvin Cook? This is a Monday night game. It's an important game, but he went out with the shoulder again. He's hurt fantasy owners twice now with the mid-game injury. It is the biggest injury of the week. It's the one we're going to be monitoring. You just brought it up. It's Monday night football. That is terrible. If you don't have a pivot option, it's it's going to be it's going to be really rough and it's it's rough because the pivot option is maybe someone you might have to pivot off to to another option. So when it comes to Dalvin Cook, you have conflicting reports. Mike Zimmer saying, "Yeah, it feels good today. He's pretty much going to be good to go." Adam Schefter coming out during the Monday Night Football game and saying he's he'd be surprised if Dalvin Cook uh, plays again in the regular season. Um, look, the the Vikings have to win. If if the that Viking, is the truth, I mean, if they were had clinched, I would not be counting on Dalvin Cook at all. Yeah, but it, I mean, the Vikings have two difficult games. I believe it's the Packers and the Bears left. And if the Rams win their games, uh, which are are easier than the, the Niners, then then they get the playoff spot. So that's interesting. Now, I had said yesterday it was the same shoulder that he had reaggravated that he got surgery on in, in college. It is not. It is the other shoulder which means he no longer has new shoulders to injure he doesn't but have any left he has they've no, all been injured no uninjured shoulders left two for two two for two <laughs> he was going he's well done and i don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing i think thing. it's a good thing i think it probably is but like you have to imagine is there a way to run without putting your shoulders forward do you think there was too much pressure on him you know the weight upon his shoulders. Was oh, okay, like, no, I yeah, and probably yeah. Okay, uh, so we'll pay attention I, to that. No Be, rim shot there. Eh, not a, not enough. I didn't want to make the effort. More crickets. Okay. More crickets. Yeah. Um, when by the way, Josh Gordon. Josh yeah. Gordon has been suspended for the fifth time. Super sad. Ever ever you know look. It's when, over for Josh. Oh, Gordon. it 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 is over. There's I mean whether whether it. Should be or shouldn't be, that's not the question. The question is, is it over? And, yeah, there's no NFL team at this point that will sign him. Nor purpose to do so. I mean, there was a time people wanted to take the chance because of what he was. Well, he was the best physical specimen at wide receiver in the NFL, and now he is a a, a helpful piece, maybe. I mean, you've seen him. He had a – look – Hey, he had a great he, catch last week. He went out with a bang. That's probably his last catch of his career. That catch was awesome. But, yeah, no no it's NFL sad. team will take another shot on him. So we just hope he uh, gets gets healthy. Yeah, and he's going to be more of a cursory tale to other players in the league who are facing those decisions and those dilemmas and the things that they're struggling with. And, uh, you know, hopefully nobody goes through what he's going through. Um, will Greer. Is going to start for the Panthers in Week 16. They want to see what they have from Will Greer. Congratulations, Colts defense owners. Yes, we will be talking about them in the streaming uh, section for sure. Uh, th this just makes sense. I mean, you have to see. You're going. You don't know if Cam's going to be your quarterback next year. Seems like they want to move on, but do they have him, the the quarterback of the future, and Will Greer or not? The Cam's fact Cam's looking like a like a better option now than yeah. he did a few weeks yeah. ago. Greg Olson cleared the concussion protocol. I'll be honest, I'm not sure this means a lot because I don't I don't think that – I mean, this team with the Will Greer decision, with where they are in the season, they want to see some younger players play. So I don't know if Greg Olson is going to get every snap at tight end the first week he comes back. I am very confident he gets every snap. because That's not what I'm hearing around camp so, from them. They've got multiple players on the depth chart that, 
that oh, I mean, have he, opportunity. He, he there. Ian Thomas, we've talked up, uh, you know, his his ability. But I mean, if you've got Will Greer coming in, then you need to do two things: one, protect him; he's new, and Greg Olson is a great blocking tight end. And two, give him the best outlets to you know uh, succeed and set up and say, can he run this offense? So I feel like they have to have Greg Olson out there. All right, uh, d so you'd play Greg Olson in fantasy? No. Okay. No, that's anyway. not what I'm saying. Uh, Doug Marone said DJ Chark was cleared to get on the field and do some running and cutting Monday. That will have some impact on potential fantasy waiver pickups this Chris week. Chris Conley? Yeah. Uh, and Keelan Cole, who had a very large target share this <clears throat> past week. <clears throat> why, why, why the hate for Keelan Cole? So here's the reason for the hate for Keelan Cole. Uh, did Keelan Cole have a good game? Not like Conley no, did. No, he didn't have a good game, but he had a large target share. So his best case scenario still wasn't good for fantasy. That's that's why. Yeah, I mean Conley had a bad game too. He just had the two touchdowns. Yeah, but forty so he, some, forty something yards. Right. So he didn't have a bad game. Right. That's yeah. correct. Yep. I was just saying, go that's, the other way. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Matt Nagy said the Bears will play their starters in the final two regular season games. He wasn't going to, but uh, Jay Grizz got on the phone. <laughs> Thank you, Jay. So we've got starters back out there. Uh, is that what they call David Montgomery, a starter? They do, but they snicker. Oh, man. <laughs> He's a starter. What do you do with him? Uh, David Mopportunity may lose his Mopportunity to be a starter next year. I mean, I he's doubt not it. looked good. I completely agree. I doubt that he loses his opportunity. I mean, th this is why he had the nickname, uh, is because... Coming into, Draft the year, capital. coming into the year, I nicknamed him David Montgomery because I didn't like his college tape. But then it just seemed like he was inheriting such a great opportunity. The amount of carries and volume and targets should be there. So he became David Mopportunity, and he had the opportunity. Yeah, he has it every week, Jason. But he's not good. Every week he's got 15 to 18 touches, and unless he falls into the end zone, he's not good for your team. And this is a team that prided itself on being able to run the ball, but then got rid of Jordan Howard. For Yeah, who ran the ball very well. I just think it's interesting because I don't think the leash is as long for David Montgomery as people might believe. He's a, It's just the he's capital. A thir he's a third-round pick, though. He's, you know, he, he's right on that edge of where I, – I agree. He's going to get an opportunity next year, but my point is if he doesn't make the most of it, he's going to be in a timeshare. And if he's in a timeshare, he's not going to help you. I'm just scared well, for his future compared to Devin Singletary. Looks like a smash home run uh, running back for dynasty owners. Superstar. Superstar And Miles future. Sanders looks like he'll be he, he'll be there too. Love both those guys' future. But Montgomery, I'm scared about. Yeah, and, and if he gets an opportunity next year, I'm out. Okay. News and notes is always brought to you by the Sleeper app. It's championship week waiver time. Before we get into that, I mean, what? What a more? Uh, we got to thank our sponsor today, mm -hmm. and it's just kind of getting to that perfect time to oh, thank our sponsor. Thank we're talking so about Pepsi. Yes, we know Pepsi takes the NFL celebrations to the next level. We've talked about it all year long. I am, I laugh every time I see a comment on social media about victory, and then obviously it's associated oh. with cracking open that Pepsi. You got to be celebrating, and that's what they do. It, 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 look, there have been hail Mary type of fantasy football wins this past week uh you know maybe you're on the right end of that marlon mack stinker last night got crack open that pepsi do you do you do the uh, pepsi shower i think that's appropriate at this point in the year i think it's okay yeah you got yeah. the get, shake up get sticky that's what i always oh, say oh gets you gotta be <laughs> celebrating get, get sticky. sticky and so uh you know that uh, this whole season we've been talking about pepsi about celebrating i know jason you're on the precipice oh, who, of a back-to-back -back dynasty league title that's right uh congrats on winning that but oh wait next week next uh, week next i week, will do my best and you'll be uh you'll be celebrating i lost big, chris i lost way. chris godwin but i should still be celebrating next week and i'll be doing it with a pepsi we, yes, pepsi, we just had our our uh, christmas party i stocked up for pepsi so i'm ready to go no it was it was in the cooler the official sponsor of the nfl reminds you to always be celebrating each and every day mm-hmm also, Foot Clan, we want to thank Omigo. I want to thank Omigo. The toilet seats are amazing. Nobody thanks Omigo more than you. No. In a real way. Nobody uses it more than me. <laughs> I mean, That's look. That's what I'm saying. It's time to get rid of nasty, disgusting toilet paper. If you really think about what that process is, it's gross. It's unhygienic. It's disgusting. And it's not 
really that good of an option. It's like going back to yesteryear. Look, when I get my Omigo, I sit down on this warm seat. That is, the, it's winter. It's cold. I wake up in the morning. It I'm was like, oh, very, it's freezing. It was very comforting. And yesterday. you go in and you're like, oh, this is nice. And then it's not freezing water washing my tu- tushy. <laughs> my tuchus. <laughs> my tuchus. It's nice, warm water washing me, keeping me clean. It's perfect every time. There are so many. You still take regular showers and stuff, though, too, right? I do still okay. take showers. This, this the is not the only I don't thi- wash my entire okay. body in the amigo. All right. All right. Just the tuchus. <laughs> Look, it's 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 you know good water. It's the same water you brush your teeth and shower with. There's no harsh chemicals like white wipes have. It's great. You're going to love it. Improve your life for better health and hygiene. Stop wiping and start washing. Right now, get 10% off your order when you go to myomigo.com slash footballers. Go to myomigo.com slash footballers to get 10% off the best toilet seat bidet. Put me in, coach. All right. Let's talk waivers for championship week. Here's a little headline. Here's a little precursor to the weekend. If the Bills defeat the Patriots on Saturday, that means that Lamar Jackson and the Ravens clinch the number one seed. They clinch home field advantage. Now they face Cleveland, which is a gorgeous matchup. Harbaugh has already come out and said that if they clinch, they're not going to play their guys in Week 17. Now, that was when the question was asked about that. Now, the question is, okay, if you clinch by Week 16, which is very rare, but if that happens, would they bench their guys? That seems hard. That's three weeks of not playing. Because you got the bye week. You got Week 17. If you bench them at all in Week 16, you're talking about a pretty long hiatus. Right, but the reason why we're bringing this up right now is because if you are a team relying on Ravens, which you are, half of you are, right? Like uh, half yes, of the you're, people you're out either there, in the title playing Lamar or you're probably facing him. Yeah. I mean, that's basically, you know, for 90% of leagues, that's true. It's Lamar versus the team playing against Lamar. And so if you are one of those teams, you have to at least be prepared. I don't think it happens. I don't think they bench these starters. Now, I don't know, maybe a Mark Andrews or a Hollywood Brown that need rest and are banged up, maybe they do get the extra rest. They which, could be surprised inactives. Right. So you, we're just bringing that up so that people out there that don't think that this waiver ap- applies to you know that you need to be prepared. And then ev- even then, Saturday comes around and the Patriots win, dump them and pick someone else up, but be prepared. Yeah, that's the message basically is make sure you got yourself set, set up in case, just in case. I can't imagine anybody – benching Lamar if he's active, but you just never know what's going to happen. That, that's the that's the hardship because if he plays a half... That's if, probably enough. If he plays a half and goes out and gets like 20 points and all the Lamar Jackson owners that get to the championship lose, oh, I don't know if I'm happy because I love sometimes to watch the world burn. I think John Harbaugh will be not exactly beloved in the fantasy community. Yeah. I don't see it happening. I think he's had such a banner year in MVP season. The stats he's putting up, I would hope that Harbaugh gives him another game. But put it this way, he'll he'll be ranked as my number one quarterback. Yeah, let's yeah, exactly. All right. So not All right. The other big situation that fantasy owners are facing it has to do with Chris Godwin. Oh. You know, we dealt with Mike Evans last week. Now Chris Godwin is down. I have a championship team facing uh Jamie Eisenberg in the in the championship from CBS. I've got Chris Godwin. I've lost three or four wide receivers to injury. I I am in the position of going and picking up a wide receiver waiver candidate because I don't get Godwin for championship week. It's a three wide receiver league. You've got to get got to get a little desperate. Yeah, I hear you. So if you talk about the replacements on that team, Scotty Miller, who we brought up last week, the rookie that runs ahead of Justin Watson, uh, even though he did run fewer routes than than Justin Watson this last week. He also got injured, and all three, Evans and uh, Scotty Miller and Godwin, are all hamstrings, so I don't know. Drink more water, but um, now this leaves Brashad Perryman, Justin Watson, and I forget the name of the third, something Hyman. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, no. I'm not that, sure that's right. No, that's right. I'm telling you, that's his name. 
Okay. You, I'm, I'm correct. That's one of those names, though, that you want to you want to go ahead and type it up on your computer before you throw out there. Um, Maybe Brooks? Ish, Ishmael, Ishmael Hyman? Ishmael Hyman, yes. Okay. First time I heard of that person. All They're, right. Exactly. But th- that's the depth chart right now. Now, they'll probably have to bring somebody else up because I expect two or three hamstring injuries in this game. <laughs> but O.J. The, Howard, watch your hamstrings. <laughs> yeah, but that, I mean, fantasy owners want to know because Jameis Winston, are you going to play Jameis Winston? Yep. Probably. Probably, yeah. The matchup is, is great. If he has a good game, do his receivers have to be part of that? Not necessarily. Pass catchers have to be part of that? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you, so, you got you to gotta pick your spots. I mean, I told you when I walked in this morning, I don't know how you pulled it off. I guess you damaged two hamstrings. But I don't understand or see a way that Justin Watson doesn't have five for 50 as a baseline this week. Yeah, he's he's going to be in play, and I think he has a solid game. I realized last week was nothing, and we, uh, you know, we I joked about it a lot, right? Uh, Justin, superstar Watson. Uh, All he needed was three other depth ex- chart options exactly. to be eliminated from the roster, and so you know we we joked about it. But last week, I you know I did say in earnestness that if Scotty Miller is out there, he runs ahead of Justin Watson. He's the rookie that this regime uh, drafted and and brought in. Um, and he fits a certain type. But without those guys, Justin Watson will be heavily involved. We don't know who's going to be in the slot taking the actual Godwin role, but it could be Justin Watson. Well, and you're going to have Cameron Bray involved. You're going to have O.J. Howard involved in the running backs, probably more involved in the passing game. But I'm moving forward with Winston, who has been, through the last four weeks, I mean, the second-best quarterback option that you have outside of Lamar Jackson. So is Brashad Perryman the, the number one waiver pickup at wide receiver this week? Yeah, if somebody like Sterling Shepard isn't still out there, Sterling Shepard, nine for 111 on 11 targets this really? past week. You would you would rather have Shepard? I think so. Yeah. I don't think I would because okay. e- even though, I mean, nine for 111 on 11 is great, I feel like we saw the week before where it was a Slayton week. Sure. And But I don't think I, it could be a – it could be a Justin Watson or an O.J. Howard week. I mean, Perryman, you brought it up this morning, too. Perryman had five catches. Now, he had three of them were touchdowns, and that that's fine. I think they're very close. Perryman's out there, though. Yeah, like I, most people are competing for Brashad Perryman this week. Yeah, and and you should be picking up Justin Watson as well. I really do believe that. Because if, if, if Jameis goes out and throws for 350 and three, which is basically nowhere near what he's been doing. He's been throwing for 450 and four the last few weeks. If he does that, you're going to have both of these guys be successful. Yeah, Whereas, it's Houston. So Houston is a great matchup. So you're not wrong. And, and you know, with Sterling Shepard, it's like I think him or Darius Slayton has a good game. I don't think they can, I don't think Eli Manning or if, if Daniel Jones is back by then really supports all of his weapons. Yeah, it's tough. It's a trust thing. We don't have any reason to trust Justin Watson yet. Correct. All we know is he's he's going to start. But it's we've a- seen we've seen players like in Indianapolis that are given opportunities to be the guy, and it doesn't necessarily matter, right? I mean, mm-hmm. you've you've seen opportunities for Paris Campbell when he was healthy, or Chester Rogers, or Zach Pascal, who's been hot and cold. It's just tough on trust. I think I trust Shepard more. Yeah, certainly. And Shepard, Justin Watson. Yes, yeah. Shepard is. A, a much better player than Justin Watson, but uh, you know it's tough. In r- right now, in my lineup, in 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 our championship game, in my lineup. So I'm just speaking for me. I'm really doing it. Justin Watson is currently in my lineup in the championship. Yeah, that's just going to be a joy. wonderful moment for you if you win on the back of Justin Watson. Yeah, and but I don't know if I'm out there prioritizing Justin Watson as a keep away <laughs> of my opponent either. I'd be more concerned about. Shepard, Perryman, and then looking at some of the other options. Now, Anthony Miller is very interesting. Anthony Miller has been on fire. He had 15 targets. He faces Kansas City. I'm not that intimidated by that this week. Are you not? I am not. Okay. No, they're at home against Kansas City. The targets have been insane for Anthony Miller of late. Now, if Taylor Gabriel's out, I have a lot of confidence that he's going to get 10-plus targets. That makes me feel very good about putting him into my lineup without worry um, even if it's against Kansas City. The game script's going to be pass-heavy against Kansas City. So volume is the reliance. It's not uh, It's not matchup. Yeah, I, I I mean, I totally see that. And and the reality is the last month, Anthony Miller is the wide receiver eight. 
Yeah, that's why I think you have to play him. Not like a wide receiver eight, the wide receiver eight. <laughs> Not a wide receiver eight, yeah. Right. He, so, I mean, when, you, when you're top ten over the last month and the targets are there, this still to me is dependent on Taylor Gabriel, which I haven't heard any news of him progressing through the concussion protocol. I would expect Taylor Gabriel to be out. I would be treating waivers as if Anthony Miller is alone there without Gabriel. But should Gabriel progress through and get back, I'm not starting Anthony Miller. But I'm picking him up to start him. Right, right. I get it. And uh, do you prefer Perryman to Anthony Miller? Yeah, yeah. Perryman okay. is my number one this week. If if Prashad Perryman is there, based on what he did last week and his snap counts and um, what's left, yeah, and what's left, I, I think Perryman would would be my number one option. Uh, there's two other names that I want to bring up personally. We talked a little bit about Chris Conley. I'm not all in there. I mean, the matchup is good at Atlanta, so maybe three names. Yeah, I mean, if Chark is out, I'm fine playing Conley for sure. Yeah, and Chark, obviously, we, we brought it up in the news. He's getting his back uh, as far as being able to cut and run and do all of those things. If he's obviously there, Chris Conley is out of consideration, right? Uh, correct. He's out of consideration. Uh, what I'm scared about what your second name is because I really hope it's not Danny Amendola. So that's one of my two names is it Danny really, Amendola. It really shouldn't be. I'm and a, I it, get that it, it shouldn't be because at Denver uh, is a terrible matchup and – Danny Amendola does what he did this past week three times a year, every year, for his entire career, and he never, ever is trustworthy. Ever. The, he already did this exact stat line in week seven. But Now in, you're going to go into Denver? No, but in week seven, he did that when there was a team full of players. He did it that, in week one, too. Sure, when there was a team. But my and, and my point is they don't have another option. Marvin Jones on IR. I mean, they're, they're, it's it's Kenny Galladay and Danny Amendola, that, and that's it. All, again, all I'm saying is it comes down to trust. I don't trust somebody that's PPR dependent. And Danny Amendola on the road against Denver and that secondary with David Blau. I don't trust that in my championship I game. completely agree with David Blau. The reason I'm bringing this up is there are rumors in the bushes, whispers in the wind, that Stafford might come back for the last two weeks. They have not placed them on IR. He wants to play. If Stafford came back, Changes would, you, everything. would you be interested in Danny Amendola? I would look his direction when it's, with like a side eye, one of my eyeballs, All right, which is tough to do. Uh, that's why I wanted to bring his name up. But the other but one. I'd, I'd rather have John Ross. I'd rather play John Ross with Andy Dalton against Miami, back involved in the offense again. I John Ross is at the near the top of my list of opportunistic pickups this week that people aren't paying attention to. Part of it is getting these guys. You're no, going to be competing against Perryman. Yeah, that that's actually a really great name to bring up. John Ross against uh, – you said uh, – He plays Miami. At Miami. Yes. Uh, so Andy Dalton plus John Ross. I want that combination against the secondary that auto pencils in three touchdowns for the opposing quarterback. <laughs> right. So, okay. Um, now, the last name I want to bring up is Greg Ward. Greg Ward, the starting wide receiver for the Philadelphia Eagles – who the last few games, I believe he's had nine targets in each of the last two games, obviously has not been involved until recently because he was, you know, he's a rookie uh, in, in college. He was a quarterback. This is, he, you know, he's transitioning now, and there's been a, a good rapport. Uh, this last week looked good. Now the matchup against Dallas isn't quite as good as it was the week prior. But would you be interested in... I mean, this is for a championship week. It's hard to throw a guy out who hasn't done it other than, you know, one and a half games. I'm probably more interested. I'm more interested in Greg Ward than I am Danny Amendola. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, much more interested in Carson Wentz oh, in an important game throwing to his – I mean, our, our, our Thega Whiteside has been bad. Yes, he's – Playing bad. I mean, Greg Ward is the rookie who has outplayed Arthega Whiteside. He, he had the opportunity. He was given the opportunity. He had the draft capital, and now – when push comes to shove, they're saying, no, this other guy is better. He's the guy I'm targeting more. He's uh, on the field more. So, yeah, Greg Ward is in play to me. All right, at running back, the big discussions around the Dalvin Cook situation. Based on how you feel about Dalvin Cook right now and what we saw from Mike Boone, because Alexander Madison missed a week, Mike Boone is entirely unknown. He comes out last week. Cook goes out. There's no Madison. And Boone puts up 13 for 56 and two touchdowns against the Chargers. You're facing a vulnerable Green Bay defense. 
They gave up the highest rush success rate, ninth most rushing yards and fantasy points to the running back position. Mike Boone's already, he's already given you like, instead of us speculating, Mm -hmm. like Cook goes out at the end of the game and you go, well, I wonder what Mike Boone could do. He's like, I'll show you over the back half of a game what I can do so you know ahead of time. He was excellent. And the thing with, we've been saying all year, Alexander Madison is the handcuff to own because one, he's good, but more importantly, he's on a team that wants to run, who has a great, uh, you know, playoff schedule, and he's behind an injury-prone Dalvin Cook. Well, Alexander Madison obviously missed this last game, but he did not participate in any practices last week. He wasn't close to playing, so I think there's a real good shot that Alexander Madison is out again this coming week, and that means Boone. And Schefter says there's a pretty good chance Cook is out. Yeah, so. Boone has to be picked up. And I, I look, all three of these guys have to be rostered in 100% of leagues. Alexander Madison should be picked up, and Boone should be picked up. Because if but Cook is out and Madison is in, I'm definitely playing Madison. He'll, he'll leapfrog Boone, you know, uh, because if he's, if he's active, there's a reason he was the number two on the depth chart prior to his injury. No question. No but, question. There is a real good shot that Boone is the starter, wins people championships. Now the real worry here is it's Monday night football. So you have to have a pivot, but you can't pivot to one of these other guys because you don't know the health of them. That so, is correct. Unless you're in dire straits, it's a tough situation to be in. If you don't have one of these other guys already. If you've got Jamal Williams on the bench, then perfect. Yeah, Jamal Jamal's an obviously a great pivot option that would put you in the position where you can be successful with the, you know, taking a shot on the Monday night availability. I want to bring Dion Lewis's name up because two reasons. One, Derrick Henry has dealt with a hamstring. He has missed some time. He has been in a position where he's had the least amount of snaps over the last couple of weeks than he's had uh, in recent weeks. And what we saw last week was what we're going to see again potentially with the game script. Lewis saw a lot of playing time in part because Tennessee was coming back over and over again last week. It wasn't smooth sailing for Tannehill. And a less than healthy Derrick Henry against the New Orleans offense, that's a difficult situation to be in. You know, you need Derrick Henry running at full steam to have a shot in that game. And if they're behind, Deion Lewis is going to get more opportunity. So I hear what you're saying. And I would be willing to play keep away if, say, my opponent had Dalvin Cook, and now he's struggling, doesn't know who he's going to start. But there ain't no chance I'm playing Deion Lewis. None, zero, zilch. I mean, if Henry is out, if Henry's gone, I'm not playing Deion Lewis. I He's not good. He, he looks like he's lost 100 steps from his Patriots days to me when I watch him play. And then he's going up against New Orleans, who's phenomenal against the run. So you're just hands off with Dion, regardless. Yeah. Now, I get that he could end up inheriting that role. But, like, I've got Dion Lewis uh, on that dynasty roster. And if it's Dion Lewis or Justin Watson. Are you are you more interested? Okay, so on Johnson could come back and play this week. But he's going to be on the road against Denver. With David Blau, potentially. Mm-hmm. So, carry on, Johnson. People don't know this. He's coming off IR. He's been practicing. He hasn't had setbacks. No Bo Scarborough last week. Are you looking carry on Johnson's way at all? Yeah, I, I would be. I mean, you know I'm a carry on Johnson truther as far as talent is concerned. How's that, how's that done? Like, <laughs> just from a life... It's, um, it's not done... Lifestyle well, perspective. <laughs> it's been poor What's for my health. What's the carry on lifestyle? It's been poor like, for my health. And his. The, yes. <laughs> I mean, the reality is, I still think we've seen him just be really special on the field. He's been a good player, and then he gets injured, and he is not good for fantasy when he's not able to play. But, I mean, if you're talking about these names like Deion Lewis, or you don't know if you're going to have a guy on Monday Night Football, I mean, if on Johnson comes back, this isn't you know, we've talked about it so much lately. You don't really want to play a guy on his first week back, and this isn't a championship. So I'm not, like, telling people, hey, you got to go pick up on and play him this week. He's a smash play. He's going to win you a championship. No. But if you're one of the teams that are in a uh, position where you lost Cook and you're struggling, you need a pivot option, the waiver wire doesn't have great options. It might if Boone is the player. But on is as good as any other option out there. Let me tell you a name I like more. Boston Scott. 
I would play Boston I'm Scott not. over Carryon Johnson in a heartbeat. Last week he had seven targets, seven catches for 39 yards. His snap counts. Everyone saw what Miles Sanders did, and it was amazing. But Boston Scott was still on the field a lot. And so I think there's an opportunity there for Boston Scott. We talk about them having to go to Ortega Whiteside and Greg Ward a lot. That's not necessarily what they want to do. Boston Scott ha- can create a little bit of something out of nothing. I would be better off playing Boston Scott myself than uh, than Dion Lewis, than Carryon Johnson, uh, those options. Okay. Uh, two other names to throw out there. I don't actually love the matchup for Adrian Peterson. It seems like a great matchup because you talk about the Giants, and whenever the Giants come up, you're like, oh, yeah, I want to play against them. But the Giants have been pretty good against the run once they uh, you know, m- made some personnel moves about halfway through the season. But Adrian Peterson is going to get the work. I-, I play Adrian Peterson against any team. Yeah, exactly. Philadelphia, doesn't matter who. Philadelphia is a phenomenal run defense. This last week, he had a very good game scored, against Philadelphia. Scored in three straight games. Exactly. I mean, so, uh, no doubt. With Geis out of the way, I think he is a solid pickup. And play. He's just owned in a lot of leagues. So sure. he's, he's a tougher pickup. And then what about, can I interest you, let's say the Bills win. Some Gus Edwards? In the Gus bus. Against Cleveland. Yeah. Uh, you saw Kenya Drake did okay against Cleveland. <laughs> um, Gus could get a lot of work. But c- can you really do that in a championship? No. Can no. you start the guy? I mean, talk about a glory play. He's going to come in at the end and win me a championship in garbage time. Yeah, I just don't know if the odds of Ingram being sat. He would have to be sat down for me to have confidence in Edwards. If he was sat down, Edwards would have a monster game. But that maybe, doesn't seem to be coming to fruition. Maybe that's right more now. of a DFS a DFS uh, play out there. If you want to be in a tournament, be a little contrarian. All right, important, important position to talk about for waivers this week because it is every week because you're pivoting every week. Tight end, Tyler Higby. Higby has been on fire. He's the tight end 11 on the season. In his last three games, 33 receptions for 334 yards. Has San Francisco. We've talked about the NFC West. They can't defend tight ends. They choose not to. It's a choice, and they don't. And his last two games are against San Francisco and Arizona. Last week, 12 for 111 on 14 targets. We have a trend here, my friends. Yeah, I mean, with with Gerald Everett out, they have used him in a way that is dominant for fantasy. He's been phenomenal. How many yards did you say he's had in the last three games? 334. You want to know how many yards he had his first 12, in the first 12 weeks of the season? Well, I bet you know. 339. Yeah. Yeah, so... Uh, actually, he is, had 212. He was on pace for a season of 339. Yeah, and he's put up 334 in the last three weeks. He's part of the offense. Um, divisional game here against San Francisco. I think Higby is a must-start. O.J. Howard, we just talked about it. Godwin's gone. Scotty Miller's gone. Yeah, O.J. Howard is is in play. The last three weeks, he's had enough targets, enough receptions to be somewhat relevant. Now, here's the weird thing about O.J. Howard. The last three weeks, he hasn't been a tight end one because he's getting like basically what he had this last week, four for 46 on eight targets. That's not crushing you the way that – like his floor is actually higher than most tight ends whose floor is zero when you're talking about waivers. Um, so I, I like his – he's the tight end 11 over those three weeks, which is ironic when he never once was in the top 12. He's just been consistently okay, but now in this matchup against Houston – I'm Where fine playing him. You've lost other pieces. I, I think he I think he is a, a good option. Uh Jacob Hollister has the, the dream matchup. Yep, we've just, been just look at what Seals Jones did last week. Hollister plays Arizona and they're at home. I, I mean he I would play Abercrombie over all the waiver wire options. Because I don't believe Tyler Higby is a waiver wire option. You'd play Hollister over Howard. I would play Hollister over okay. Howard. I, I think I, that's that's a pretty tough decision there, and so you go the side of matchup there. I'm going to side with Russell Wilson at home against Arizona. Over past just, four weeks, Jacob Hollister has not topped 44 yards, the has last, not scored a touchdown. The last four weeks, Jacob Hollister has not played the Arizona Cardinals. That's Yeah, that's his weakness. <laughs> yeah. uh, you like him more than Dallas Goddard? Uh, yeah, yeah, I do. Dallas Goddard has been one of the biggest disappointments to me over the last several weeks. This should be the time that he is stepping up and dominating in the pass catching realm. This is where Alshon is out and D has been gone and Aguilar is out. 
hey, let's get our pass catching tight end two involved. And it's like, eh, 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 eh. I mean, he's been very disappointing. This this last game, five, five, five for. There's a little button on the desk that was sent in by a, a Foot Clan. Isabel uh, Green. Best friend. And uh, when you hit it, it says 55. Yeah. But no one can hear it. That's right. Yeah. But, but you can. still paused so that you could hear it. Yes. Yeah. All right. That's neat. Uh, Noah Fant, last week, two for 56 on three targets at Kansas City. That was the snowball. Uh, Detroit this week. I think Noah Fant is sneaky. Okay. Personal time. We have a caller. What? This caller's name is Jason. Okie dokie. All right. I have a decision to make. Oh, personal time. I see. You need help. I need help. So in this this, uh, dynasty matchup, obviously I can't go to waivers, but I have several tight ends, and I don't know who to start. Yeah. Let Let me give them to you. Okay. Greg Olson. All right. Jack Doyle. Yeah. Noah Fant. Yep. I think that's it. Let me give you the answer. That's... That's what that's what we got for you. You understand? Is is none of them are the Bears? No, no, no. But he he just weighed in. Oh, okay. So what? go with that option. Thank you, Jay. Thank you, Jay Grizz. It's no offense, and it's not even close. Really? Not even close. Not even close. No, you're not playing. I told you. I know you believe Greg Olson's going to play a bunch of snaps. He's he's coming out of another concussion, and the team has Will Greer at quarterback in a bad matchup. Then you brought up Jack Doyle. As if you didn't watch football last night. <laughs> Jack Doyle I mean, was terrible. You're, you're depending on Brissett, and then you go to Drew Locke and an athletic tight end in Fant in a gorgeous matchup against Detroit, who is a, you know, has Drew Locke thrown him in the football and he's putting up, even last week, yes, he had two catches. It was in the snow. It was worth 56 yards. That's because Noah Fant is more athletic than 90% of tight ends. I would not even be equivocating one bit or asking that question again personally. All right. And Jay Grizz agrees. He's in my lineup. All right. Uh, let's uh, – anybody else at tight end you want to mention or are we good to good to move on? Uh, if Derrick Henry was out, would you be more interested in Johnu Smith? Nope. Okay. I don't mind – like if you have bottom-of-the-barrel options, Johnu Smith and Mike Gesicki are both options. Yes. So – gesicki has been uh, above a double-digit target share for four or five weeks in a row. So, um, But I doubt you're making that decision. Full stream ahead. Oh, it's championship time. And we have one option. We've got our streaming pick, and it is Ryan Fitzmagic against Cincinnati – Look, he has been a really solid quarterback since he has taken over. You know, I've seen so many tweets. Everybody You're talking about the leading rusher for the Miami Dolphins? <laughs> yes, I am. The Dolphins leading rusher, Ryan Fitzmagic, who did not even start the entire year. That's a that's a really nice baseline to have. And if you look at Cincinnati and the quarterbacks that have really uh, done well against them, obviously Lamar Jackson, but uh, uh, Kyler Murray, they, they've been beaten on the ground by running backs who can run, or b- quarterbacks who can run. I am not trying to stream this week. I'm hoping that I have a much better option on my team, and I don't think it's guaranteed smooth sailing for Ryan Fitzpatrick. But outside of Fitzpatrick, there just aren't a lot of options out there that I would tell you, go into your championship game and start. Would now, you- if Tannehill is somehow out there, which he really, really, really can't be if you're in any sort of league that you know is competitive. But if Tannehill's out there, I'm still playing Tannehill. Yes. Fitzpatrick, Cincinnati's been a lot better lately. But again, like you said, the options are very limited. You're not you're not playing Rivers or Carr or Brissett. You're not playing. Uh, you know, maybe you look at the Daniel Jones, Eli Manning against Washington in desperate straits, two quarterback leagues. I, I think but it's, if, it's Fitzpatrick. I, I, I agree in your championship week, it's Fitzpatrick or preferably Tannehill. And, and the reality is you listening have Tannehill because you've been listening for the last couple months and had, have been picked him up and riding the hot streak that he's on already. Um, in a two quarterback league, a guy that ju- just got back on the field that I'm okay with is Andy Dalton. 
Andy Dalton on the other side of the ball from Fitzmagic against the Dolphins, who the Dolphins give up the, the most to the quarterback based on the average quarterbacks that they've been playing. Um, you you know, you talked about John Ross and pencil again, three touchdowns. Well, Andy Dalton could be one of those options out there. That's a glory play. I don't want to rely on Andy Dalton in my championship in a single quarterback league, but in a two quarterback league, I feel much, much more comfortable with it. All right, let's go ahead and get into maybe the most important pickups of the week. Defense versus offense. Presented by Head and & Shoulders and Walmart. Defense versus offense. Here we go. I think there are a number of very nice streaming defensive options this week. Agree. So I wrote one in for Mike. Oh, nice. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. and So I'll start. Mine is Denver. The Denver defense, they're seven-point favorites against David Blau at home. Detroit's offense has been struggling. You mentioned them not having any wide receiver options outside of Galladay, and that's pretty much true. Denver, heavy favorites at home. I love them against Detroit. I don't think you have a high-risk situation there. Yeah, and, and for me, we, we talked about it earlier. Will Greer getting his first start for Carolina – as a third-round rookie quarterback, now, the Indianapolis has a very good defense. And Carolina, over the last five weeks, have given up the most fantasy points to opposing defensive special teams units. Now, I don't know if it's good or bad that Kyle Allen's not there, because Kyle Allen's been the one giving up all these points. But here's what I know. The team, despite constantly being asked for the last two months about switching to Will Greer, constantly said... Eh, Greer's not really ready for that. They thought Kyle Allen was the better option to win. Now the winning game is gone. They've let their head coach go. They're just playing for the future. So now Greer's getting the start. I don't think he's tearing up the Indianapolis Colts. So I, I think he's. It's. I think the Colts are a somewhat safe defense with a an extremely high ceiling. You know, if you're looking for pick sixes, we we haven't seen Greer yet. So, you know, the op the option that he comes out and just collapses is there. You took some personal time earlier to ask your question, and I yeah. have the same question okay. because I have uh, the decision, the Denver defense against Detroit or the pick I picked for Mike, which is the Atlanta Falcons defense against Jacksonville. Jacksonville has been one of the worst offenses in football lately. If there's no DJ Chark, this game's in Atlanta. We just saw them slow down. San Francisco and win that game, mm -hmm. Atlanta's defense has the ability to give you a very high upside week, and Jacksonville just can't score right now. I mean, Fournette was in stinkers again. You haven't had uh, a lot of success. What do you think about those two options? Yeah, I, I'm going to go with uh, yours, not Mike's. Oh, out, of, out of those two, I'm going with the defense that I believe is – great Denver has a really really good defense they're they're uh coached by a defensive minded head coach that is finally getting things clicking that side of the ball is established and David Blau I don't think is going to be able to to do anything now obviously the the rumors in the bushes about uh you know Matthew Stafford maybe coming back that 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 would flip it to to the Falcons but while the Falcons have shown up for you know a few of their last couple games I, they still don't have the pieces on defense or the, so the season-long defense to they, make me believe that, you know, are they going to be hotter able to, right now? Are they going to be able to stop Leonard Fournette? Confidently. Yes. You confidently believe that they'll stop Leonard Fournette. I, I, let, let's put it this way. The last two weeks they played Christian McCaffrey and then the 49ers running backs, Raheem Mostert. They finished the weeks fifth and sixth in fantasy defenses. So I don't, I don't know. I yeah. don't think – and that, those are on teams that, you know – San Francisco, I just didn't expect that performance, and now they're at home. So it's it's a difficult situation. Both teams are at home. You side with Denver. That's yes. who's in there right now for me. And Jay Grizz takes the Bears. Uh, he always does. Come on, man. Call us homers. This segment brought to you by Head & Shoulders and Walmart. Head & Shoulders, offense for great hair, defense against flakes. Visit Head & Shoulders, Walmart, sweeps.com for your chance to win tickets to Super Bowl 54. We brought up defensive streamers. Just remember – you might have a defense that you love that's already in there. Oh, I'm so but happy for you're goodness sakes, this. drop those unnecessary handcuffs. The players like Tevin Coleman that you're holding on to for no reason. 
the players that you're not going to play by any stretch of the imagination this week that you might as well drop to be a landmine for your opponent and pick up a good defense so you don't get them played against you. Your third and fourth and fifth running back and wide receiver options, if they are not good enough to crack the starting lineup of your team or your opponent's team, they don't serve you at all. Steal all the defenses. Steal the tight ends from from your opponent. You've got to look at the matchup this week. You are you are playing for you know, it's like when you're pregnant, you're eating for two. This is cha- <laughs> this is a championship. You're playing for two teams on the waiver wire. You're playing 100% keep away of your opponent and uh, and you're, you're you're trying to give birth to a tro- a trophy, to a, a championship trophy. trophy. Yeah. It's going to hurt. <sighs> but you're going to be happy you have it. Yeah. And you'll probably nestle it into your arms Cherish for it. weeks on end. All right, we want to thank our studio sponsor, Pristine Auction. A DeAndre Hopkins signed jersey went for $85 yesterday at pristineauction.com. Use the code BALLERS when you sign up. Hundreds of daily auctions. Great opportunity to get a nice little gift. Here's a little prequel for tomorrow. Jason will be doing the mailbag drop, so get ready to go. (laughs) Good luck on the waiver wire. Find those earplugs. You'll need them. Get those Foot Clan titles. Shopballers.com if you want to see the new Foot Clan title shirt. Talk to you tomorrow. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. And Foot Clan, remember that Pepsi takes all NFL celebrations to the next level. That means you, fantasy football player. Whether it's a Hail Mary touchdown or that Hail Mary fantasy football victory, a defensive stomp on the goal line, or a Super Bowl win when it's time to celebrate, it's time to crack open a Pepsi. It's as simple it's, as it's, that. It's, it's not ABC. hard. It's, it's win, celebrate Pepsi. Easy. Pepsi is the official sponsor of the NFL, and it reminds you to always be celebrating.